Modeling for advanced microgrids. Modeling for microgrids is a challenge because a microgrid's motivation is based on the needs of a population, a particular uh, municipality perhaps, or a campus. It is first conceived by an opportunity to provide services, shelters of last resort, and general emergency management capacity for resources that are available. So the, the driver behind that microgrid is making services and shelters and islands during storm events and black sky events, making them resilient and keeping them operational, functional, and safe and able to support services for the greatest number of people possible. So when, when we select a site for microgrid, it is generally a site that is conducive to provide those services and sheltering needs that we have. However, stakeholder facilities and the infrastructure is rarely well matched from a load and technology standpoint. Generally, uh, when we look at a municipality similar to Neptune or Galloway Township, when we look at one of those, at that type of an advanced microgrid application, we have to model it in a way that allows us to site generation where it is appropriate to site generation, use storage where it is appropriate, and ultimately create a synergy between the microgrid environment energy offtake and the microgrid environment energy generation and self-sustaining capabilities. It's not always simple and straightforward, such as installing a generator or a solar array at a particular facility that provides sheltering and uses a lot of electricity under normal conditions. It's not always that simple. We're not always presented with those opportunities. There are many, many cases where we have opportunities where we could potentially site generation like solar or a generator at one particular location that may not use a lot of energy and may only provide a limited number of still vital needed you know, resources and services, but perhaps not, not all services like a hospital. So when we have the opportunity to aggregate multiple locations and site multiple energy generation, control, storage technologies, we, we really have a challenge that we don't normally have because all of these facilities are connected to wires that are, are served by a centralized utility plant. And as long as there's coal or natural gas, those energy requirements are met. So now we're in a situation where we have different generating technologies and different consumption profiles. We have some things that like to make power during the day, some things that like to use power at night. So modeling allows us to optimize what generation to place where we can and when to use generation and storage and control assets to optimize all of the assets as they're distributed throughout the microgrid. In the New Jersey market, most commonly we use Durcam. Durcam is not only a platform that has an excellent track record, but it is also preferred and quite frankly, it's required by the Board of Public Utilities. So, so we know that the modeling, the assumptions, the approach that we take with, with Durcam is going to be consistent with the expectations of the BPU and New Jersey's utility regulators overall. When we boil it down, what we're really doing is we're, we're taking the challenges and opportunities within the microgrid and we're optimizing those challenges and opportunities to really create a seamless environment with regard to utility service. And it's critically important that it is seamless. So DERCAM and modeling is a huge part of that. And it's something that absolutely must be anticipated. It's something that has to be included as a critical milestone in, in microgrid planning. And it's a major item that has to be done by someone who's qualified and experienced for sure. In addition to DERCAM, there are other modeling platforms available. They include Homer Pro, which is 
probably the most nationally recognized name. Homer Pro has been in development over a decade and, and has a very, very robust platform. And Indigo, Indigo is another modeling platform that can help optimize it. They're very specialized in controls and, and high-speed communications for smaller assets. And that has a definite applicability to the advanced microgrid. So there are, there are multiple modeling options. The important thing to remember is that you know, the, the most valuable modeling software is dependent upon the clarity and quality of the information that gets put into it. So as with a lot of the other steps in planning and preparing and participating in microgrid evaluation, modeling is a, is a part, whichever platform you use, that requires very, very clean and, and complete data sets.